once upon a time, in the fairyland of Bakuland, there lived a princess so beautiful, loving, and gentle. And it was Baki Hippo's hope to meet the princess. The princess was the literary character from his novel, but what is real and what is not if a noble heart is in love? Alexandra Trinika, how are you? Oh, thank you. Hello, I'm I'm very good. How are you? I'm I'm good, thanks. Uh, here in Liverpool, you're in Lublin in Poland. Yes, I am. Thank you so much for having us uh, here with you. We are from Lublin. It's snowy here. Snowy we are in the heart of winter. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, it, you go? Do you go skiing out in the snow? Is it? Oh, thank you. Actually, I don't go skiing, but I've been for a sleigh ride. Yeah. <laughs> I I go for a sleigh ride or for a walk whenever I have time to do that. Okay, you wrap up warm. Yes, yes, <laughs> and and Bunky does too. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. But before we talk about uh, Bunky and the Worms, we talk about yourself, what you do, what your, your hobbies are. You're an assistant thank professor you. at the Marie Curie U University. Yes, thank you so much. Yes, uh, I, I, I am an assistant professor at Mercury at Skłodowska University. I specialize in the British 19th century uh, literature okay. in the Victorian novel. Yeah. <laughs> and just my passion, my, my greatest hobby. I just love reading and writing and yeah. analyzing text. Okay, you've got a great bookshelf there behind you. It looks uh, thank you so much. quite a wide range thank on there. You. you actually teach in literature then as well? You're studying yes. that and you, you actually teach it as well. Yes, I do. I do. Yeah. I teach literature and I, I try to participate in a number of different projects connected with writing, with yeah. reading, with teaching, with just, just spreading the word about uh, the world of literature. It's, it's okay. so dear to my heart. Yeah. Do you have any particular favourites? I know on your Twitter page you mentioned um, uh, Trollope, Chronicles of Barsitter, yeah. Ollie Farm. Yes, definitely. Uh, thank you. Uh, Anthony Trollope is very dear to my heart as, as a writer, and I think he inspired me to start my research. Okay. Also, Wilkie Collins is, yeah. is an author whom I would love to recommend yeah. to anybody who loves uh, Victorian fiction. It was neat. Is he credited with one, right, one of the first detective no novels, Wilkie yes, Collins, yes, the, the Moonstone? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much for, for mentioning it. Yes, and it is such a brilliant detective novel. I, I don't think that nowadays it can be copied in any way in yeah. terms of the plot, the, the detailed descriptions of the characters, the inner life. And it is written in such a way that the reader will not really know who committed the crime or what are the feelings of the characters. They are just like people, very difficult to define, uh, very complex, far yeah. from black and white, so I just adore it. Okay, so pre predates uh, Sherlock Holmes, doesn't it? And I guess there's Christie by a couple of hundred years. W yes. Woman in White as well, another another novel of his. Oh, yes, yes, thank you. Yeah, Woman, Woman in White is, is just brilliant. I love this uh, novel, and uh, I've been working on this novel in a way, trying to define clothes. Yeah. Uh, and descriptions of clothes because they are excellent. Okay. And uh, yes, it's another masterpiece. Yeah. I know where one of my favorite writers from that period was C.S. Lewis, uh, The oh. Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, Narnia series. Oh, yes. 
that's how I taught myself how to actually read by reading those books in the library as a five year old. You, you started yeah. very early yourself, didn't you? Reading and writing. Thank you so much. Yes, actually, I started reading with my mom when I was four, and we've been reading C.S. Lewis, uh, The Chronicles of Narnia, and I just fell in love with the story. <laughs> First of all, because I've been reading it with my mom, and yeah. secondly, because this was such a brilliant world of possibilities. Mm. My goodness, it's been just a wonderful adventure. I never grew out of this story. I, I think that each time I read it nowadays, it's yeah. a different experience yeah, and yeah. better and better, yeah, yeah. isn't it? It is. I've, I've got a shelf, well, about 10 of his novels there on the, and I'll pick one up and I'll read it every couple of years. And as you say, mm -hmm. it becomes like a new experience. You sort of, you get more Absolutely. from it. Absolutely, yes, yeah. yes. I feel that we are just diving deeper into the world of, of the same book. And on reading it, it becomes a different experience each time we reach for it. Yeah. Every year, yeah. yes, every stage of life. Okay. I, I read Catch-22 every, well, I, oh. I was going to say every year when I go on holiday, but I haven't been able to for the past couple of years. But I find a different aspect of the Catch-22 novel, something else that will strike me as funny. Absolutely, absolutely. It's, I have the same with Salinger, The Catcher in the Rain. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is a very specific novel, isn't it? Because it's a very complex Bildungsroman. Some readers do not like it because of the language, but I look at it from this perspective of Bildungsroman. And also, uh, I feel that this, I mean, every time I open this book, I found some profound layer in it. Yeah. It's much more than a story about growing up. Yeah. I think it's just a story about life and mm. just just amazing okay well one of your favorite characters uh, you say on your twitter page as well as lewis's carol the uh, the cheshire cat the grinning cat. oh yes thank you so much yeah i love cheshire cat <laughs> i also from the linguistic standpoint I, i've been writing a paper about the cheshire cat and how he uses the language in order to create the whole complex reality and actually the point is that uh, in the novel the cheshire cat does not say a lot but whatever it's he says it's extremely meaningful and even yes or no creates the whole reality it's just wonderful i, I just adore this character yeah. and the tea party <laughs> in the story. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm going to ask you something, I'll go off on a tangent if you don't mind. I don't like talking about politics, but because oh, yeah. it's sort of in the news today, where you are is sort of on the border with Ukraine. How are the mm -hmm. people feeling in Poland? How's the local the media reacting? Oh, are people so in much. fear? Oh, I mean, thank you so much. We are looking at the situation and of course everybody is anxious. So, so I think the feeling of anxiousness prevails. Yeah. Yeah. definitely we are anxious right? yeah that's, that's, not, that's not good on, on a happier note uh, should we talk about Bunky and the Wombs mm. Mm. just the character next yeah. to you sitting there the little hippo yes he yes. is with me thank you so much I want to introduce to you the Bunky yeah, you princess yeah, and Bunky yes okay. Bunky is wearing his bow tie today because we have a special event uh, meeting with you <laughs> <laughs> I'm honoured <laughs> nice to meet you Bunky <laughs> Thank you. Uh, where, where, where did you get the idea from? Was this from, I've, I've read on your website, um, that you had a visit to London, in the UK, yes. and you yes. picked up a souvenir. I'll let you yes. explain. Yeah. Thank you so much. So uh, uh, I went to London, Chris and I went to London in 2019. And actually, after visiting the British Museum, we saw this mascot of the Blue Hippo. And the mascot has such a specific face expression. It wasn't happy, it wasn't sad, but it was sort of like critical, yeah. critical and judgmental. But in, in this way, as, as we all are in our life, and I thought that there must be a number of possibilities hiding behind this character. I, I started imagining the story and then I have this uh, original hippo at home, but then I created Banky that is here with us <laughs> and I, I started thinking about the story and it just it was born there during the conference and I thought I really need to write it down because it's been in the back of my head all the time and yeah. you know, the characters were so real and it was so natural that it became a, a part of my world and I thought I would love to share it with somebody yeah how, how did you how did you get this published did you send a, a, a script off to a local publisher Thank you so much. Actually, I, I published with a wonderful publisher, Whip and Stock in Oregon, in okay. the USA. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, I've just, just uh, I was looking for a publisher who would 
represent the values that would be close to mine, the ones that I want to represent in my story. And I think it's just, just wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Who did the illustrations? Did you do that yourself or is that a specialist? Thank you so much. No, it's, 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 these are my illustrations. So oh, they're, they are very personal and, yeah. uh, <laughs> Yeah, so I, I'm also grateful that I could I could incorporate them into this project. Yeah, I, I started reading today. Uh, there's there's a, oh. a sample available on the Amazon web page. I started reading it, so Thank I'm gonna you. I'm gonna continue the read after we've chatted. Um, Thank you so much. It's got some excellent reviews on Amazon, and these are from international reviews all over the Thank world. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yes, I, I mean, I'm very grateful for every uh, word uh, that I received from the reviewers, from the readers. I mean, I created this novel for the readers from my heart entirely because and, and when I know that somebody uh, sort of dived into this world and felt at home and felt a part of it and became friends with Banky, this, this means the world to me. It makes me the happiest, the richest person on the planet. So I'm immensely grateful for that. Oh, brilliant. Part of a series that is just the first one in a set of set of books about Bunky. Thank you so much. So actually, firstly, I had this story in my mind, but Bunky is so precious to me that I don't want to part with him because yeah. he's he's a very personal character to me. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm definitely Bunky will have our adventures. So okay. definitely yes. Yeah, uh, you got Bunky. The, the, the books available in Kindle version, in hardback and paperback. Yes. Have you looked at creating an audio version so that you know it can be a spoken version? Thank you so much. So currently, these days, I am working on on the audio version okay. of the book. I'm recording whenever I have time, and it's it's a very slow process because I mean, as as far as I love English, it is not my native language, so I am aware that yep. it can go a certain way. So I am trying my best. Like I analyze each chapter, I read it, reread it. And, uh, you know, I, I practice a lot. And then I sit down and record a chapter. So right now I am just in the middle of, okay. of the recording. Okay. W without spoiling the plot, can you give people an introduction to what the story is about? Of course. Thank you so much. So actually the story uh, is, is uh, the foundation of the story is like two layered. Uh, on the one hand, we have this story about my Banky, who's living in Warmland, Christmas is coming, and Banky is awaiting a, a gift from Santa Claus. His family is coming, his friends are arriving, and Banky has some expectations and some dreams uh, uh, when he thinks about Christmas. And my story uh, somehow uh, uh, concentrates on this idea that sometimes in life we are not even what is what we expect that we would receive but we are given something else but uh, in the end of the day it turns out to be a much uh, better experience directing us in a certain direction yeah. and also uh, Banky is a hero of his own daily life so this was very important to me to present a, a character who would be a hero but very close to the reader and there is the second layer of the story Banky is writing a story within my novel. Yeah. yeah. And yes. But that's <laughs> so, unusual. Thank you. I mean, it's sort of like an intertextual touch. He has a story within a story. So the chapters are presented in, in a certain way. Like, firstly, we are in the Fairland where Banky lives. Then we are following his story. And then again, the readers are invited to return to Walmart. Okay. There's quite a, a wide age range that you're aiming for in this. Is it you aim between five and up to fourteen year olds? Is that the age I, group? I, the thank you so group? much. I, I believe so. I mean, I believe that this is a story for all the readers of all ages. Like everybody can find something special in the story, hopefully. And it's like we've seen it's like with all the stories that I've been reading during my childhood, when I read for them nowadays, I also uh, feel an immense joy on reading them. And I'm just hoping, I'm just hoping that uh, my readers will experience a similar feeling. Mm. And definitely it, it's a story for the young audience and yeah. older one. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's a lengthy book, isn't it? 260 pages. Thank you so much. It's yeah. 70,000 yeah. words, is that? Oh, yeah. I, I, yeah. Thank you. Yes, it, it, it does have like a 180 uh, something pages. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's, 
Yeah, so it's not a typical children's book format, but it's also, it is a children's book. In Did a you, way. Do you have a favorite passage? That you, would you mind reading yeah. a, a sample for us? Of course, us? Just of course, I'd love to. My favorite passage, let me find it. It's the passage when Banky encounters Rudolf the reindeer for the first time. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm just looking for it. And it's such a special passage because Banky would like to have peace and quiet because his winter holiday started. Yeah. He doesn't have to attend school. And there he is asked to do something really special. And he doesn't know what to do. He would like to rest. Okay. So uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm just, it's, it's here, almost here. Maybe, maybe I can read another passage, which I found, okay. which, I also, which I also love. It's yeah. the passage because we are also visiting Santa Claus in the story. And Santa Claus has this nice list. And the elves are bringing Santa uh, these recommendations. <laughs> and uh, there is the list of improvements. So Banky will be the hero who really improved throughout the last year. And uh, the elves would like to read a recommendation to Santa Claus. So this is the message okay. to Santa Claus. Banky Hippo, a young inhabitant of Walmland, distinguished himself this year thanks to his untiring inner struggle from which he emerged victorious. Inwardly balancing between the feelings of naughtiness and goodness, he attained a level of self-control allowing his goodness and beautiful heart to shine through all the previous months. Presently, just before Christmas, not only did he shovel the sidewalks, but also shared his last cookie with his cousin Rodney, not to mention him saving and befriending an orphaned little wolf, whom he named Plum. Moreover, during one conversation just before Christmas, Banky Hippo expressed himself in a positive way about sharing Christmas gifts with the mice inhabiting the mouse hole in the living room. From our observations, it is apparent that although Banky can boast a quick temper, his goodness and inner beauty could serve as an example for others. He's like a caterpillar transforming into a winged butterfly or like a bat turning into a rose. So these are observations by Rudolf the reindeer. That's delightful. Well, thank you. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Can I ask you about the setting? You call yes. where Bunky comes from. This is warm land. Is that a play yes. on the word? Does it suggest that it's a warm place, a hot place, oh, even though it's winter? Thank you so much. But warm, yes. warm. I mean, thank you. Yes, it can be analyzed in this way. Yeah, the, yeah. the etymology of this word. Yes. And on the other hand, this place is also connected with my uh, conference trip. When actually I discovered on my way to the conference, I discovered Warm Lane. A street and I was okay. enchanted how beautiful it was and yeah. I thought this is the perfect setting and of course the uh, warm land is an imaginary setting but mm. I was definitely inspired by it yeah you also write poetry I read have you, have you had any of your poems have any of them been published or is this Thank you so much. So actually, I've been writing poetry, and I was hoping to to uh, keep on writing poems. Then I moved into short stories and fiction, and of course, academic work. But I I love writing poetry. I don't know if I'm I'm proficient, but I just love it. Mm, yeah. <laughs> so it always stands from my heart. And uh, I just I just had a a, a wonderful opportunity to to have my poem uh, published in an IRF uh, a publishing collection, publishing house collection. Yeah. It was a, a short collection of poems and I just feel very grateful that it was possible. Yeah. You know, you're, you're publisher based in Oregon. Have you published a different language version? Is there a version in Polish and other Thank languages? Thank you. So actually, no, we don't have a Polish version yet. I don't have one, but I'm planning uh, on uh, translating the text, even though it seems to be a very difficult task, yeah. because I've noticed that it's impossible to translate a book, mm. and it's impossible to uh, recreate the fictional world and characters yeah. uh, as well as it would be in the in the initial language. Mm. And so I think it's a very demanding task to translate, and I would definitely love to do it. Even yeah. though I know that it will be um, very difficult, 
Mm. So I, I admire translator. Yeah. Okay. Have you got any marketing plans uh, for Bunky for things like, I don't know, maybe creating a cartoon, a television series, or or for toys and gifts based on, on the Bunky so character? Much. Thank you so much. Yeah, so, so first, I, after I wrote my novel, I had this, this like urge in me to create Banky. So I just took a thread and the needle. And in August, Banky came into existence and ran the Banky Princess. And I also have Plum and Rodney, but they are not ready because I have I have a lot of work. <laughs> but they are yes, but they are they will be here with us too. And I I just wanted to to what I really like doing is. Uh, I don't see any division between my world and literature. I mean, I see, of course, but I like to invite my literary world into my presence. So I, I invited Banky and I wanted to offer the same uh, to my readers. So yeah. I, I was honored to work with Chris and Beth. They are very inspiring and, and really talented persons and mm. my friends. And 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 um, I just we just started this amazing project with mascots. So uh, hopefully the readers will be able to uh, take a personal Banky home okay. or a Banky princess. And of course, I would love to see Banky and the Wolves uh, turned into a, a, a cartoon or a movie. It's, it's, it's one of the deepest dreams, but I know it's, it's in a dreamland, but hmm. it would be amazing. Yeah, it's, um, how, how, much, how much time do you spend on writing? I know you're working full time. How, how much time do you put aside? And did you go away into a locked room by yourself and just do you have a target every day of a word count or just whenever whenever the mood comes? Thank you so much. So I, I know that there are some writers and, and the, I, I really value that, but if they sit down every day and they write a certain number of words. Yeah. And I know that Trollope used to do it too. He, he was very efficient when it comes. He was very hard working. Every day he would write like several pages, no yeah. matter what. And actually, when it comes to me, I feel that I can't do it. I need to be really in, a, in, a, in the right mood for writing. So I feel that in my case, this is uh, intentional. This is real. This is something that I can really share with the readers from yep. my heart. Okay. And these days, I didn't have a lot of time to continue writing because of the end of the semester, hmm. the exam session at the university. But I definitely write a lot in the summertime. And last year, I also wrote a lot during the winter season. Yeah. I think that I will continue after after the exam session. Okay. Uh, have, have you got plans for writing in any other genre apart from children's fiction? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. So actually, I'm editing my academic book about uh, the Victorian female characters. Okay. And the new Victorian female characters. Yeah. And I hope to see it uh, uh, published th this year. Yeah. And of course, it's it's a very different project uh, comparing to Banky and the Wolves. Uh, mm. It's it's the one that I try to. Uh, it's, it's a different approach. Mm. I try to work hard on the research, and I want to carry out my research in a in a very detailed way, so that every reader will be satisfied with with on reading this this book. Mm. And of course, we know that uh, nowadays we have the internet, media, and researching has. Is, is different than in the past. Like in the past, we had libraries, and now mm. the number of information and the speed with which they are changing is, is immense, mm. is huge. And I, I, I carry out my research, and I know that next week I have to improve it because there will be something new, yeah. a new publication or a new article. So it's a, it's a very different process, but also enjoyable. Okay. On your website, you encourage. Uh, readers to take part. I noticed one that you had a bit of a competition for someone who could draw a picture of Bunky. Yes, thank you so much. Yes, we had this competition uh, with Banky. Banky was the main judge of the competition. Uh, the Banky <laughs> Prince and I, we were just just uh, in the background because Banky was the one who knows about art and we were just enchanted by this entry by our young artist Sanda from India. Yeah. Our artist is 13 years old and oh. the work he shared with us just captivated us, just oh, yes. stole our hearts. Hmm. And Skanda presented Banki in such an original way. Yeah. And uh, there is such a familiarity and also difference in familiarity 
between Banky and Banky. Yeah. Such a unique representation and the way that the vibrant colors are yeah. at all over this just amazing uh, uh, drawing. And yeah. Banky is dressed in his uh, sweater yeah. and in his scarf and he has this very mysterious smile. Yeah. Just, just enchanting. <laughs> Did you find that when you're writing, you've probably got the, the plot in your mind. Do you find that your characters come alive and they sort of oh, thank do, you so do much. things? Yes. Yeah, yeah. But we, when I'm writing a book, uh, I really have to concentrate on one because then the book and the characters are following me, hmm. like friends, in yeah. a sense that I'm always thinking about them in the yeah. back of my mind. And actually, they are leading me somewhere. I don't even really have to think about it. I know that. I already know what they will be doing. I'm mm. just sitting down and, and I know what my characters yeah. would will do because yeah. they were there with me all the time and it, it comes naturally. That's why I think it's very difficult to concentrate on several different projects mm. at yeah, the yeah, same yeah, time yeah. because one really has to get involved very mm. deeply into the process. Yeah. yeah. Writing. Okay. What, what advice would you have for someone to encourage someone to get their work out there? Mm. Thank you so much. Actually, Banky in the Walls is my, is my first novel, even though I wrote some other novels, but they are in my desk. Still. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, I think that even today, somebody asked about this, this advice on writing, how to write a novel. And, and also I've been asked the previous day how to write a book. And I said, I don't know, because uh, it's such a natural process and one really has to surround uh, uh, oneself with the characters, with the story, really dive into it fully and not treat it as, uh, not treat it as, you know, paper, pen and paper and writing, but it has mm. to be much deeper in my opinion. It has to be like, one is really surrounded by it. Yeah, yeah. So this is what I did. Okay. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, but all different. Are you using, I know we've been chatting on Twitter. Do you use other mm. social media? Do you use Instagram and TikTok and Facebook? Thank you so much. Actually, I've been using Twitter for three months. I've never been, I had never been on social media before. I, yeah. I've been terrified of social media. <laughs> I imagine, yes. I imagine it's a, it's a very, uh, that's what I imagined, but yeah. it's a very uh, hostile world. Okay. That, uh, but what I discovered, I discovered a wonderful community of writers, of readers, of people who, who really want to share the literary world. I, I, I've met wonderful friends and it's been amazing for months. Yeah. I I'm also on Instagram mm. and that's all. I have YouTube channel. Yeah. And I have my website. So that, yeah. What 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 I'll do as well at the end of this, I'll put a link to all of your all of your media, Thank so you people right. who want to get in touch, you know, they can connect that way. I've seen that you, you posted different sort of versions, like there's a Valentine um, picture of Bunky that you're gonna you've been posting out. Yes, yes. Thank you. Now, because uh, Bunky in the Wand, it's it's a Christmas story, it's a yeah. winter story, but also yeah. it's a love story. And this love story is the second layer in the book because it's it's the story of Bunky. It's his novel. Mm. He's writing his novel, and yeah. it's about him yeah. being a hero and the Bunky princess, who is this wonderful, gentle, and noble creature who. Yeah with whom he really fell in love. But to me, this idea of love, because it's a children's novel, but in general, um, this idea of love is connected with nobility, friendship, and kindness. And mm. that's what I wanted to present in my okay. novel. Okay. Will there be a, a novel, a new novel published, to say, written by Bunky? Oh, any, any plans you. for that? Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. What do you think? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Bank, Banky says that he would love to publish his novel. <laughs> he's, he's a very prolific writer, and I think that his story within Banky and the Walls is, is so beautiful. It is, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Alexandra, look at, looking at the time, it looks like we ran out of 30 minutes. Um, is there anything else you, you want to you mention, you want to talk about, you want to highlight? Oh, thank you so much. I don't know, would you like me to find the passage about the Riddle of the Reindeer? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah it's good, good ending. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I, I just I also in the story, the readers will be able to find the map of Walmart, Banky's Fairyland. It's it's on one on one of the first pages. Okay. So there is a map of Walmart for oh, the yeah. readers. Yeah. So they can 
travel with Bunky. And actually, <laughs> this land exists here for real, but only those who believe in my characters will be able to find it. Okay. <laughs> so, so I'm looking for a passage. Found the passage. Okay. So uh, I would like to present a passage uh, from the chapter, the Northern Star asks to be followed and Bunky becomes a hero. <laughs> and this is the moment when uh, Rudolph the reindeer emerges from behind the bush. And <laughs> Bunky has a, a one a huge task in front of him. So this is the passage. The world needs you, repeated Rudolf the reindeer, looking at Banky with his soft, peaceful eyes. Yet Banky experienced some inner hesitation. Today, he groaned, I wanted to have Christmas. I'm having winter holidays. I don't attend school this week, and I was hoping for peace and quiet. Rudolf stared at Banky thoughtfully. Santa Claus told him that Banky was the chosen hero. Was it true? Santa Claus used to be right, as he could read others' hearts. Perhaps this complex heart hides a true noble flame that could save this year's Christmas, the reindeer thought. Yes, he said peacefully, still carefully looking at Banky. And it is about Christmas. I'm glad there is no school this week. Ah, oh, said Banky inaudibly, as he didn't want to offend Rudolf the reindeer. In fact, he was extremely impressed by the deer's appearance. As it is with Banky's, he felt everything in his heart much stronger than others. Banky's are always guided by emotions, and now in Banky's heart, there was a tiny, tiny flicker of the true hero coming back to life. Something began sparkling there, and he felt that the world needing him wasn't so bad. It would be worse if the entire galaxy required his help. The world was still much smaller than the galaxy, and much more manageable. It could have been worse, thought Panky comfortingly. He also realized that he didn't want the reindeer to get offended and leave. There was such an excitement in this new adventure. Banky began thinking that actually he could do something about the world needing him. Perhaps, somehow, the Banky princess would learn about his courage and come to Wormland in order to see this brave hero. Are you really Rudolf the reindeer? asked Banky, more out of amazement than out of suspicion. Can I pet you? The glorious deer lowered his head so that Banky could scratch him behind the ear. Banky removed one of his blue mittens and patted Rudolph uh, on his head. The reindeer's fur was so soft and silky, as silky as his ethereal voice. After patting the deer and scratching him behind the ear, Banky noticed a glistening stardust on his paws. It had a lovely scent of gingerbread cookies and milky cupcakes. The scent of home, Christmas, joy, and safety. I believe you, said Banky. You are Rudolf the reindeer. In his amazement, he forgot about uncertainty and fear. Rudolf calmly nodded his head. Why does the world need me today? Asked Banky with curiosity and decisiveness in his voice, as if saving the world was a daily Casual affair. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> You've got a beautiful reading voice. Thank I could, you. I could just listen. I just, I'll just sit back and listen to you reading. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you. And it's, it's, I really like this passage when Banky meets Rudolf the Reindeer and he has this inner struggle. He wanted to rest. Yeah. And yet he has to do a lot hmm. if he decides to do so. I've read he's he's not he's not a perfect he's he's a bit of a naughty boy at times isn't he he's, he's not perfect by any means. Yes, Banky. Yes, definitely. Yes, you're you're right. So Banky will be this imperfect character. I really wanted to create a character that wouldn't be perfect because I felt overwhelmed by a number of perfect characters and yeah. but I mean I wanted to create a character that would be every reader's friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah be... like us, like yeah. very imperfect, sometimes grumpy. Yeah complaining, dissatisfied, but inside uh, 
really trying to mm. be noble, to be kind. Yeah. Just Someone like that. that we can relate to. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's yeah. Exactly. Not somebody perfect, but at the same time, Banky is perfect through mm. his, I mean, because he tries to, his best mm. to be noble, to be kind, mm. to be courageous, even though it's difficult. Mm. I mean, we, we all know how difficult it is. Yeah. Uh, oh, Alexandra, it's been a, a magical experience chatting with you. I've thank really enjoyed you so it. Much. I really enjoyed chatting with you too. I, thank you so much for having Banky, the Banky friends to me, <laughs> and for offering us this opportunity to, to share more about our world. I've, I've, it's been a total pleasure for me. Thanks so much for having us. Okay, well, let's keep in touch on, on Twitter. Another. Yes, yeah. definitely. Let's keep in touch. Thank okay. you so much. Yeah, thank you, and uh, goodbye now.